thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is the uh, mechanical engineering technology webinar. We're going to help uh, help share some information about our, our program. Um, but first, we have a, a welcome from Associate Dean Tony Garcia. Thank you, Luke. Um, good afternoon for those of you here live, and we're also recording it. So I'm the Associate Dean of Academics in the College of Engineering and Professor in Chemical Engineering. And what we've been doing over the past few months is uh, having webinars recorded for each of our 13 accredited programs. So in the College of Engineering, uh, we are known as a value school of engineering, one of the top value schools of engineering in the country, ranked, I think, number 12 out of 500 uh, schools, primarily because of two factors. Um, one is that we provide uh, a lot of opportunities for students. And, and there are two forms for that opportunity. One is that we provide a, a great breadth of accredited programs, accredited by the uh, ABET um, in different divisions of the Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology in the United States. The other is that our graduates um, get a very good starting salary. And this particular program has one of the higher uh, starting salaries, uh, mechanical engineering technology. And so this in combination with the fact that for the cost of attendance for in-state students is a great value. So it's both the, the cost as well as the effectiveness and the opportunities that are provided. So in order for us to explain all these 13 accredited programs, we have a webinar series. And so you are going to be uh, led by uh, our faculty and our guests and um, also, we'll have an open um, discussion section, session so you can ask questions from the experts. And so thank you again for attending. And I'll just turn it over to our host. Thanks, Dr. Garcia. Um, and along the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to unmute yourself and, and ask. Um, so I'm Luke Nogales. I'm the Mechanical Engineering Technology Program Coordinator. Uh, I'm an associate professor here. Um, just to give a little background on me, so I was born and raised in Albuquerque. Uh, I was an, a product of this program. So I went to a, my undergraduate here at New Mexico State University. Um, while I was a student here, I interned with Sandia Labs for two years. Um, and then just before I graduated, I was able to do a, a summer with General Motors. Um, and, and then finally, when I did graduate, I, I really decided uh, my, my passion was in uh, designing products and in product development. And, and I went to go work for Procter & Gamble in, in Cincinnati, Ohio. I, I worked out there for about six years. Um, while I was there, I went to graduate school at Northwestern University studying product design and, and development. Um, now I'm teaching uh, courses in machine elements, uh, project capstone, uh, senior project capstone, um, and uh, intro to product design. Now if uh, Dr. Sama could introduce herself, please. Thank you, Luke. So welcome everybody to the MET program. My name is Sama Benayed. I'm an assistant professor in this program. I joined this department in 2017. Um, so a little bit also about my background. I was born and raised in uh, Tunisia. Uh, that's where I had my uh, bachelor degree uh, from Tunisia Polytechnic School in uh, 2009. And then uh, my master's in computational mechanics in 2010. Then I went to the US, I went to Virginia Tech to have my PhD there from, uh, in uh, engineering mechanics in 2013. And then I had a, a postdoctoral experience at the same university uh, working on uh, optimization of um, um, uh, energy in buildings, especially in HVAC systems, and that's, that's mainly my, my uh, domain of expertise. Uh, to, so, and um, uh, shortly, I'm teaching the uh, uh, thermal science courses, so mainly thermodynamics, uh, heat transfer, um, uh, renewable energy technologies, uh, HVAC systems, and instrumentation. And uh, we're, we're always available. Feel free to reach out to us through email, phone, or whatever. And then I'll, I'll turn it back to Eduardo, I guess. Thank you very much. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Eduardo Gamillo. I am an assistant professor at the, uh, the engineering technology department. Been with the NMSU for 
15 years. Um, originally, I mean, I graduated from, uh, from, the, from the program too uh, in 2005. Uh, I thought I was going to have a military career at the time, I was going to be an officer in the army. I, uh, I was, I was in, the, in, in the army before and um, upon graduation, um, I, before graduation, I spent you know, a year in Iraq as a soldier. And then uh, when I came back, I had great mentors that uh, led me to stay in the program and, and, and become more involved within uh, the manufacturing field. Uh, after graduation, I, I went back to Iraq to work uh, for the Marine Corps as an engineer. Uh, came back, started working for physical science laboratories, and I worked there for a bit some time. And then I went to a, a manufacturing technology and engineering center, uh, MTech, where I fell in love with manufacturing. Um, then I went back to school and, and, and got a degree in industrial engineering um, and uh, with a focus in manufacturing. And then uh, I started working for the ETSC department in 2011, the engineering technology department in 2011. And um, from, I was an engineer first there. And then I eventually became a professor in um, uh, 2016, among with uh, Dr. Benayet uh, the same year. And um, I pr primarily teach in the manufacturing uh, sector, the program, uh, the solid work courses. And, and uh, so that's, that's what, I, what I do there. And, Thanks, Eduardo. And now if our guests could introduce themselves. Michael? Uh, hello, my name is Michael Rivera. I am uh, currently a senior in the MET department. Um, I was born and raised in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, where I graduated from St. Michael's High School. Kind of jumped around, didn't really know what I wanted to do. Went to a couple different colleges and then finally went to uh, NMSU where I learned about the MET department. Been a great department ever since, and uh, I'm expected to graduate in uh, May of 2021. Morgan? Yeah, I'm uh, Morgan Beal. Uh, I'm a graduate from the MET program. I graduated in uh, December of 2015, and I'm currently an uh, engineering technologist and team leader at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. I uh, worked a year for the labs uh, starting in February 2016. I did a student internship there for a year. And then I've been a staff member there for the last uh, four years, coming up on five. So, thanks, Morgan. And we'll get a chance to, to dig into uh, why these guys chose the MET uh, path and, and what they hope to do with their careers. So, um, I think it's important to address what is mechanical engineering technology. Uh, so, a lot of people have heard of mechanical engineering. Not everybody's heard of mechanical engineering technology. So, I wanted to kind of uh, share some of the differences. Also do a good amount of work uh, behind the computer where we're doing a lot of design work in, in, in CAD modeling and simulation. Um, and, and it's very collaborative. So the, 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 the group is, is working together as a team to try and solve problems. Um, we got this really uh, nice uh, graph that was developed for us. I know it's a lot of information at once, but it, it, it kind of shows uh, the, the spectrum of career paths that a mechanical engineering technology person might go down, an MET versus an ME, traditional engineering. And so there's, there's kind of this spectrum. So um, if you go to the, the right side, you have theoretical research, um, complex design and analysis, analysis, systems integration. And so that, that's, that's more of what you might expect from a, a traditional engineer, but there's definitely overlap. Uh, our MET students are going into manufacturing, they're going into design, they're going into testing. Um, some of them go into to sales and, and distribution. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a spectrum of opportunities for the mechanical engineering technology uh, a student and graduate. Um, our, our students, uh, like I said, uh, like, to, uh, like to work with their hands. They like to build things. Um, this is a, a picture of Nimai. I, I don't know if Morgan knows Nimai, but he's, he's up there at Lano also. Um, he, he's working on a project uh, that was sponsored by Cummins. Um, it's a company that we collaborate with a lot. Um, they're, they're building a, a custom system, which I'll, I'll show a little bit later in, in the, the presentation. Um, they, they don't just do mechanical systems, though. They do, they do electrical systems. So they, they really develop this electromechanical expertise. Uh, this is Luis here. Um, he, he's, uh, he's, he's designing a, a robotics kit um, as part of a, a uh, an activity that we do with uh, high school students in the area. Um, our students learn how to analyze systems um, and, and they, 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 they can look at the whole picture and, and then break it down into the components uh, that are in the system. 
Um, they do a lot of work with SOLIDWORKS. Um, uh, SOLIDWORKS is a, a CAD package. It's, it's, a, it's a software for designing things on the computer. They learn how to design things. They learn how to put together assemblies. They learn how to do uh, simulations and different types of analysis. Um, they also learn how to, how to make things with, with uh, uh, industrial equipment, with, with, with machines. Um, so one, one of the things that just happened recently is we just had a complete overhaul of our machine shop. Um, this happened just before COVID hit. Uh, so uh, we're, we're, just, we're, we're just dying to get in there. We're waiting to get in there and, and start using this equipment. But I do have a few pictures to kind of show you what this new shop looks like. Um, so here, here's a, an overview. So it, it's been cleaned up a lot. Um, this is the shop that Morgan may no longer recognize. Um, I don't know if Michael saw the old one either, but it's, it's, it's very different. So it's been modernized. Um, we have lathes, we have mills, um, we have uh, a CNC brakes, we have a laser cutter in there. Over there off to the right, uh, we have a welding uh, shop set up. Um, we have uh, CNC routers, we've got a water jet here. Um, and then we also have a handful of new CNC machines. Uh, so we can, we can uh, teach our students how to build things the way they would uh, in industry. Now, one of the things we, we really try to work on here is help our students navigate uh, this kind of chaotic uh, product design um, and engineering process. Because at the beginning, you're not always sure exactly which direction you're gonna go in, but there's a process, process and methodology to, to working through it. And, and so we really work to help our students uh, learn the process and develop confidence in their ability so that they can go out there and solve problems. They, they work together in teams. Um, th this here is a, a, a prototype uh, of a device that we were working on for Driscoll's. They're the world's largest berry uh, uh, nursery. Um, and so we were looking to, to uh, handle uh, strawberry plants here. So I don't know if you can see there, but those are, those are strawberry plants. And this is an early stage prototype. And so students work together to kind of flesh out the idea early on. Um, and then they work towards things that are a little bit more uh, advanced. So this is a, a collaboration we had with NASA where we uh, designed, uh, built, assembled, and tested this, this rover here for a simulated Mars environment. Um, our students also uh, learn how to develop professional skills um, so that way they understand what their role is inside of an organization. Um, they, they understand kind of how the business comes together and how they can contribute to that business in the most successful way. I think I recognize that guy down there on the bottom left. And, and uh, a lot of what we do, um, especially in the junior and senior level courses is all teamwork. And so you, you're working together as a team to solve problems and it's interdisciplinary oftentimes. So we have the mechanical engineering technology degree but we also have electronics. Um, we have information engineering technology. We, we, we have civil engineering technology. Um, we, we, we work collaboratively to solve the type of problems you would see in industry, um, which is why I'm real confident that when our students come out of our program, they're in a position to do well at whatever organization they end up at. This is a machine that, that many, many students have worked on. Um, so th this, is, uh, this is probably the culmination of three semesters of work approximately here. Um, this is a CNC wood router built from scratch. So this is a, a machine that these students put together um, to, to, to test out uh, or to apply the skills they learned throughout their program. This is their, their senior project. Uh, there's also a handful of extracurricular opportunities. So you, you, you develop a great skill set in the classroom, um, but it's always good to complement that with some other skills outside of the classroom. So one of the, the most popular groups we have here on campus is the Mini Baja group. It's a club where they design, build, and test uh, essentially a, a, a off-road buggy and an off-road go-kart. Um, they, they have a machine shop that they get to use to, to build all these components. They have the, the latest software to, to do the design and analysis. They have teams that are working on different components, just like you would in, in industry. We have the concrete canoe, canoe team. Um, a lot of engineering goes into uh, making a canoe uh, that, that, that is functional, but out of concrete. Uh, they're consistently uh, one of the top teams in the country. We also have Aggies Without Limits. Uh, this is an uh, excellent organization that does uh, humanitarian projects in the region as well as across the globe. They usually every summer travel to a place where, where they need some sort of infrastructure project done 
And this one here, they, they, they built a bridge that saved uh, hours of commute time for, for this community. Um, we also have uh, Studio G. It's part of the Arrowhead Center or Entrepreneurship Center. Um, and Studio G is a resource that a lot of our students use if they're interested in starting their own business. So some of our students become entrepreneurs and there's resources on campus for free for students to, to become their own boss. Some of the career paths uh, for, for students, if, if they aren't starting their own companies, um, are, are, I'm gonna show you real quick. So we, we have a lot of students that go to Sandia National Labs uh, up in Albuquerque, Sandia National Labs uh, does a lot of work in Homeland Security, especially with uh, nuclear weapons and deterrence. Um, so our students go there, they get jobs like uh, mechanical design engineers. Uh, they do everything from design work to prototyping and testing. Uh, Cummins uh, hires a lot of our students. They, 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 a lot of them go to Indiana, but they have uh, manufacturing operations all across the country, all across the, the world. Um, a lot of our students go into the manufacturing role. Some of them go into design, some of them uh, go into testing. A lot of them get hired as field engineers. Uh, PSE Archery, they're one of the leading archery companies uh, in the country. Um, we have some students that are working there. We actually uh, uh, were able to develop a good relationship with them because one student, had this, it, was, it was his dream to go work for PSE Archery. So one of our faculty members uh, set up a meeting with them um, and, and was able to go over there and kind of share his skill set, and he was able to get a job with PSE Archery. And since then, he's able to been, bring in other uh, NMSU graduates. Uh, a lot of our students go work for Raytheon. Um, Raytheon does a, a lot of uh, missile defense work. Um, our students uh, usually get, get a pick of jobs to choose from. Um, maybe uh, Eduardo can give one example of, of one of our students who recently graduated and was offered, I think, three different jobs. Yeah, so we have a, a student that recently graduated within the last probably three years or so, uh, Sam Gifford, and, uh, and he applied, he went to the um, um, career day with them, and uh, just when they saw his portfolio and skills that he had acquired in, in our department, you know, he was offered three or four different jobs in that interview. He ended up uh, taking the um, um, tooling engineer job. And um, he's done really, really, really good job there. Uh, we've had uh, the, 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 the head of uh, the tooling engineering contacting us directly, asking us for more candidates to go work in that, in that program because uh, they really, really liked him. And when I, we still have contact with the students, you know, and uh, so but when I speak with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Sam, he really loves what he, what he does. You know, he, he gets to develop systems, you know, that save the company millions of dollars because of his designs. And he's very, very proud about that. Thanks, Eduardo. Uh, we have students that go work for General Electric. Uh, this is out in Cincinnati where they, they do the, the jet engines for Boeing. Um, they, they do a lot of work in the, the manufacturing space and some work in, in quality assurance. Um, we have students that go work uh, in the oil industry, um, including companies like ExxonMobil. Um, we have Slumberjay, uh, Halliburton. Our, our, our comp uh, these companies are, are uh, in the region. Um, they're, they're also across the globe. So it gives our, our students an opportunity to see a little bit more of the world if they want. Um, we, we also have some smaller companies that, that many of you may not have heard of, but are in the New Mexico area, like Agamatronics. Agamatronics is a company that was founded by uh, an MET graduate. Um, he he uh, designs equipment for the agricultural industry. Um, so I believe this one here is uh, for harvesting lettuce heads. And so he's, he's well on his way to becoming a millionaire, um, which is really nice. But, but what, what's really cool is that he then hires METs to come work for him. Um, so he, he knows the skill set and he's able to put them to work. And so Agmatronics is based out of Silver City. And then we have LANL or Los Alamos National Labs. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're the, the, the centerpiece for the Manhattan Project, um, which was to develop a, a, a nuclear weapon. And so there's ongoing work in lots of different areas for Los Alamos Labs. It's much bigger than anybody could probably ever imagine. And Morgan will probably share a little bit of that. Um, but, but our students get hired for a variety of roles, um, everything from doing a lot of SOLIDWORKS and CAD modeling to uh, developing new products and systems. Uh, the, the starting salaries are, are typically over 65,000. Um, they're, they're consistently uh, really, really good. Uh, we, we have some that are making six figures um, straight out as an undergrad. Uh, and then we have nearly 100% job placement. I, I would say within uh, six months, it's a 100% job placement. Um, 
Most of them get their jobs uh, within three months. A lot of them are getting jobs um, well before graduation. I think it really just depends on, on them finding the right fit for what their interests are um, with, with the right company. Okay, so uh, enough, enough from me. I, I'm hoping that uh, Morgan can share a little bit about his experience as a student in the MET program and how it helped him at Lanel and, and maybe a little bit of the work that you're doing over at Lanel. Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you again for inviting me to do this. It's, it's exciting. I, I remember being a pros prospective student and not knowing at all what I wanted to do. So this is a cool opportunity to look back and kind of help share my experience. Um, again, my name is Morgan Beal. I'm a engineering technologist and team leader at uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory. Second, my fire alarm's going off. We'll give it a, a minute. If, uh, if we need to adapt, we'll adapt. Man, with 2020, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so anyways, um, uh, the question I hope to kind of shed light on is uh, what is an MET and what does an MET do? Because I think those are kind of the questions students are going to come in with. So before I get into that, just a brief, my story is uh, coming into all of this. A uh, senior engineering technologist at the lab told me uh, good advice he gave me is move fast to your first failure. <laughs> and so uh, keep that in mind. When I graduated high school, I left out of state. I grew up in Southern Colorado and um, I left out of state to uh, university to start a mechanical engineering program. And being young and immature, um, I, I really fell flat on my face. I, I didn't succeed. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't quite see how it would fit. And um, I got poor grades, didn't do well, and had spent a lot of money learning that lesson. So I moved fast to my first failure. <laughs> uh, after that year, I uh, regrouped and decided I wanted to try to play college basketball. So I went to a small D2 school in Colorado and tried to walk onto their team. Uh, it, was a, it was a cool experience. I, I played a ton of basketball that year, um, but I also didn't find any fit really within their academics. And again, didn't see really where, I, where it was gonna go. So once again, my grades were poor. I hadn't quite matured yet. <laughs> and so there was my uh, second failure. And after that, I, I resolved to uh, not go back to school. I enjoyed doing construction when I was in high school and I wanted to return to that. So I uh, uh, started working for a company. We were traveling all over, uh, insulating houses and I loved it as a young guy. And with the encouragement from my family, they wanted me to go back to school. My brother who was the student at the MET program at New Mexico State said, come on down, see Las Cruces, um, get a feel for it. I'll set up a meeting with one of the professors and you can just talk to him. So I came down, I, I fell in love with uh, Las Cruces, the warm weather, just that culture there, the good food. And I had a meeting with uh, Anthony Hyde in where I was able to tell him sort of who I was, what my story was. And he encouraged me with the desire that I had for hands-on work and that construction background and having uh, pursued engineering before that he felt that that MET program would be a good fit. Um, I'll get more into that in a little bit, but to continue on, I then graduated, went through the program, graduated in December of 2015, and I uh, became an intern at the lab here at Los Alamos uh, for a year and then became staff. Uh, since being at the lab, I have worked on a vast range of projects. Um, I, I can't count the number of projects that I've got to work on, the different technologies we've dabbled in, the people I've worked with, um, so I've been really blessed. I've worked uh, with uh, various companies. I've traveled out to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to work on a project with uh, Westinghouse in the nuclear energy sector. I've uh, traveled to San Antonio to the Southwest Research Institute working with them. Uh, I've got to travel to Las Vegas, Nevada to work with the test site out there. Four years in, I still feel I'm only scratching the surface of what what this job is and how to continue growing as an engineering technologist. So I, I, it's been a great, a great road. Um, so why the NMSU MET program? So looking back to that conversation with Anthony Hyde, 
to be honest, I don't exactly remember all of the things that he told me, but one thing stood out about that conversation. It was surprising to me that he took the time to meet with a kid who wasn't even a student there and would have a conversation and really uh, give me advice. And that was something that stood out um, as opposed to other experiences that I had had was there is a close community within the NMSU MET program. And that has transcended generations. Um, I remember a time when I was stressed out with work and trying to figure out what my role was. And uh, my dad had a friend who was a graduate from the NMSU MET program <laughs> way back when, who was now an assembly line engineer with Boeing. And he gave me his phone number and I called him and he just really shared with me some wisdom and advice. So I really appreciated that. Um, I can think of six other METs from this program here at Los Alamos National Labs off the top of my head who I've either collaborated with, uh, lived with for a time when I first moved here, who I'm uh, still in contact with, and also who I hope don't watch this because I'm sure they'll find a way to make fun of me. <laughs> but um, just that camaraderie within the MET community, I think is something that is unique and um, something that I've really treasured about um, coming out of that program at NMSU. Uh, the second thing is the content of the MET program. Uh, it was cool when I first started that immediately in uh, Eduardo Gamillo's class, I'm learning about SolidWorks immediately. So weeks into this program, I'm already emailing my dad saying, hey, look, this is the technology we're using. This is used all over in industry hey, look, I'm able to make these things from scratch. And so just that immediate exposure to technology that has immediately a, immediate application in industry was of immense value and was very captivating. And then you pair that with this the, the analytical foundation that's expected of the students coming out. And it really trains your mind to problem solve in an engineering capacity. You pair that with the practical skills and then uh, like Luke uh, discussed, uh, there's the teamwork and collaboration as an expectation. Uh, there were projects we did in that program where you couldn't have done it as an individual. It, it would have broken you as an individual. You had to find a way to collaborate as a team. And that has immediate application in industry because these are students who are coming out into industry and can hit the ground running as a part of a team. They might not have all of the skills that they need to succeed uh, as, a, as a young employee that still needs training, but their ability to quickly collaborate, find their role in a team. Um, I think of the ETs that I know here at uh, LANL, they've all found niches where they are adding value to their organization. And, uh, and that's 100%. Every single one I know I can say is, is adding value and really uh, performing well at the lab. Um, so that's kind of what I would say about the content. It's that industry, industry applicable technology paired with that foundation of problem solving. Uh, it, it just really sets us up for success when we get into industry. And then uh, the third thing about the MET program is the uh, getting to do the fun work. <laughs> uh, since being at the lab, um, Two things have stood out to me. Technicians that we will hire that have gone through an associate's degree, either in crafts, uh, machining, welding, any of these sort of trades that come into the lab as technicians. If, if I ask them, where do you see yourself in five years or where do you want to get to? They will say, I wanna be an engineering technologist. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that we do have that hands-on, but because we have that four years bachelor degree in an engineering discipline, we are uh, allowed to have more autonomy within our companies. We're trusted more um, to have a lot, of, a lot more ownership of our work. So we do get a lot of say-so within our sphere of influence. And then the other group are the, uh, the R&D engineers. And it, it puts a smile on my face every time a PhD engineer tells me that uh, they wish they could do what I get to do. <laughs> because I get to grab my coffee and say, I'm, I'm done looking at emails and sitting at my desk. I'm going to go to the lab and build some stuff and test some stuff. 
So it, it puts a smile on my face every time I get to do that. <clears throat> so I guess I'll end with this. Uh, it's the cheesiest example I could think of, but if people were to ask me, uh, uh, what is an MET and what do they do? The best way I could answer that is if you watch any of the Iron Man movies and they show that minute long montage of Tony Stark in his lab, struggling over and over to get it right, working through iteration, prototyping with his hands on the work. I would say that's, that's what an MET is. <laughs> and so uh, I'll, I'll end with that, but um, yeah, I thank you again for the opportunity to share this, so. Thanks, Morgan, I appreciate it. Michael, can you share a little bit about your, your experience so far on the MET program and why you chose to, to go down this path? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so like I said, coming out of high school, I was really undecided, like I'm sure many of you guys are. Um, not really sure what I wanted to do. Um, I was a good baseball player in high school, so I decided to go play baseball. Um, really didn't know where I was going. So struggled with grades, much like um, Morgan. Uh, kind of struggled there, moved back to Santa Fe, went to community college, tried to find something I was passionate about um, where I decided I'll try uh, engineering because I've always been real hands-on, um, like to be in garages, always worked with my dad and my grandpa on building stuff. So um, mechanical engineering was the first thing that came to my head. So um, came down here to NMSU, joined the uh, mechanical engineering uh, department, um, did one, two semesters um, in that department um, and then that's where one of my, one of my good friends from Santa Fe, he was in the MET department, um, told me about the, uh, the MET department and it's kind of, kind of skeptical. There's no way you could just be building stuff all day. I'm, I'm over here looking at numbers and trying to analyze. Um, so he ended up actually taking me to the old, uh, the old lab that, uh, Luke showed that's remodeled now. I've got to see the old one took me down there and showed me projects that they were working on and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so I switched over to the MET department instantly. Uh, I think my first semester in the MET department, I worked with Eduardo um, in SolidWorks. Um, and then from that moment, just kind of fell in love with it. I was able to come back home to, uh, to my family, my fiance and show them, oh, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm building on, on the software and kind of explain to them and just have the uh, the passion for uh, really building stuff on online, um, and so that's where that's where I fell in in love with the MET department and uh, every one of the professors, every one of the classes. They kind of teach you something a little bit different. Um, Samoa's class is a lot of problem solving for sure, uh, challenging classes, but gets gets you to really think about different situations, different scenarios, and and how to put it all together. Um, loose classes, a lot of uh, collaboration, like you were saying, a lot of team building. Um, it's a lot of communication and kind of getting to see another person's point of view and how they could um, alter or, or make your vision on the project a little bit better. And you kind of just build off each other and feed off each other and you end up with this project or this, this outcome that, that you didn't really have in mind at first, um, but it's way better than your your um, first idea or first image. Um, so all these classes all bundled together give give you a lot of good skill sets um, and make you real confident with uh, with your career path. Um, right now I'm I'm expected to graduate in May, so I'm still looking for a job. Um, but I do feel feel the confidence um, that this department gave me. Um, and so going out there and finding a job and really. Um, talking about my skill sets is is a lot easier now than when I started. Um, so the department overall has been great and I love it. Got nothing, nothing bad to say about it. It's just a lot of fun uh, building stuff with your hands and I look forward to uh, my final semester. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. So with that, I'd like to open it up for questions. If anybody has, has questions for any of the faculty members or for our guests. I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll start. <laughs> I, I wanna add, I'll ask our two guests, what, what's the, the hardest part of the program? I would say uh, 
time management. Um, it's a lot of work, definitely having a bunch of different classes um, and managing your time would probably be the most difficult. But uh, once you get that down, um, I think the challenge is, the challenge is great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with that answer. I, I think the iterative approach to solving problems is something that takes a lot of, uh, a lot of practice to get it right. Um, so putting a load on someone that they can't bear is going to force them to adapt to change. And I think the MET program did a really good job of uh, uh, training us to think differently, lean on each other's strengths. And so, uh, yeah. I wanted to add a couple of things to, to what has been said here in the presentation. Um, so one of the things that, you know, it had been mentioned here throughout the presentation is that, you know, we use SOLIDWORKS, right, which is a design software, and we have it embedded throughout our department. I teach th th those, co those courses, but the, uh, once, once you go through the first phase of learning the software itself, uh, then it gets implemented throughout the, the department in the different, uh, you know, whether it's simulation, you know, in, in looks classes, you know, or, or in or stress analysis or different types of, of, of because it, it, it's, it's more than just building pretty pictures. It's, it's, it's actually doing analysis and engineering, you know, in, in, in within, within your computer, right? And so we don't, we don't uh, just expose the students to it and kind of give them an understanding of it. And then they go and they, 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 you know, put this in a drawer and then continue to do something else. No, they carry it throughout their department. And then when they leave this department, um, and I know this from, from uh, people that, you know, hired our students, they come and tell us, you know, they're, they're very skilled in that, in that, you know, in a lot of the areas, right? But when they lead here, they're they're really uh, uh, knowledgeable about the software. They 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 they're 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 able to hit the you know the ground running right, and uh, and uh, they they then from simulations to to uh, uh, manufacturing, writing uh, code for CNCs, uh, designing. Uh, and so it, throughout the department, and they, they use it. And at the end, we also certify the students. You know, uh, we they become SolidWorks certified professionals. Uh, associate first, and they go into the professional, and then they can take that too. Which you know, when you have that under your belt, it it really shows your boss that you really know the skills for for this. So I just wanted to point that out too. It's a good point, and to, to build on that, I think uh, our graduates do hit the ground running when they, they get their jobs. I mean, there's still a lot to learn, um, but I think all of them are in a great position to, to really start contributing uh, very quickly to whatever company they're working for. Are there, are there any other questions or comments anybody would like to share? Yeah, I've got a question. You mentioned um, there was a couple different projects that were mentioned during one of the presentations and uh, collaborations with com companies. And I'm assuming um, that was done during one of the classes, um, though I might be wrong there, and that it's a project done outside of a class. Um, so I guess that is one question is, are those projects done in class or outside of class? And what other companies do you collaborate with to, for those kind of projects? Excellent question. Yeah, so, so it's both. So they're, they're in the class and they're out of the class. Um, so for example, the the, the Cummins project um, was a grant uh, that uh, I collaborated, collaborated with, with Eduardo and Sama, um, uh, requesting some funds for a senior project uh, course. So we actually uh, had several projects that came out of that grant um, where they were helping us uh, uh, essentially uh, fund uh, projects that made our, our curriculum better. Um, so we did one project where we we revamped uh, some of the, the heat transfer and thermal dynamic uh, lab equipment. Um, we had uh, a, the other project, which was the, the, the bigger one, was the, the, the CNC wood router, which was a, a piece of equipment that helped us um, make more things inside of the shop. Uh, we also had an, an old uh, injection molding machine that was just out of commission. And so we retrofitted it, updated it, put new controls on it, put a, a, a new, uh, this, new equipment across the board so that way it would work and we could teach our students about the injection molding process and how to make molds, uh, how to set it up properly and so on. Um, and so we did that inside of a, a course. So the, the course uh, was them applying their skill set to, to, to update equipment 
that would then be used in labs, which would also help them learn. And that's where we try and try and do across the board. We try and find win-win opportunities. Um, the, the NASA project that we worked on that I mentioned earlier, it was a, a grant that we uh, partnered with uh, a SIPI up in Albuquerque, the Southwestern Indian Polytechnic Institute. We received a grant from NASA um, to develop uh, a, a simulated uh, Mars environment with a, a rover that could do a few exercises. Um, and so NASA is trying to inspire uh, kids to go into STEM fields, right? And so that's a big part of why we were doing it. Um, and so I brought that project to my kinematics course. So kinematics is you're looking at the, the study of how things move, study of motion. Um, and so my students in the lab portion of the course designed these mechanisms. Um, we, we, we built the, the rover um, and pulled it all together. And so that was done inside of the class. Now the scope of that project was quite a bit bigger than just what you could do in a classroom. So I actually hired several MET students uh, to, to work with me over the summer to, to complete that project. Um, and so they, they, we got to travel up to Albuquerque a few times. We, we even traveled out to Houston um, and, and got a tour of the, the, the NASA facilities out there, which was pretty fun. So we do projects in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Awesome. Sir, I have a, a comment. First of all, I'm sorry, I got um, um, into the meeting late, but um, I want to like to thank Mr. Garamillo. I'm actually taking his class. Um, uh, his class is like very awesome. Actually, the cool part is that I actually got also into the uh, NASA A3 project uh, this semester. I'm very transferring uh, from EPCC. So, you know, like this semester uh, has been like actually kind of uh, different from the <laughs> from everything I know, you know, like doing everything online. Uh, but the cool part is uh, I wanted to, to to actually point that the, the um, um, pretty much the um, the program actually meets like, um, you know, like very high expectations because I was able to to actually point myself in, you know, like the right direction. I'm also part of the TRIO program that I'm taking advantage of that program. Uh, so pretty much, you know, for everything that I was like uh, not aware of, you know, that I was like, like, you know, like lacking of information in some points, I was able to actually have a very good, um, you know, like uh, walk through. <laughs> so uh, Mr. Garamillo class, you know, it's like being like very, very helpful with the project for, for NASA. You know, um, I I really enjoy, you know, how he has been handling his class, you know, like now that everything is happening, how it's happening. And, uh, you know, I'm because I have been I have been learning, you know, actually, and it has like uh, for a class that is like so complicated, you know, with a program that we never like faced before. Well, I have never faced before, you know, so uh, it's like very, very cool. And, you know, I'm taking advantage of it for the designs for the NASA thing. So I'm able to, you know, like now I do a little, you know, like, uh, you know, design over there. So I'm very ha happy for it. Uh, the NASA project that you were talking about is like very interesting. This is my second um, time working in a NASA project. I work in EPCC, EPCC in another project. Uh, totally different, you know, because it was like not uh, into design and everything, but it's like super cool. Uh, and I'm I, I feel like very, um, inspired you know like um in this uh school that's why i choose it i didn't want to use it you know but i choose this um this uh school because i think like everyone tried to help each other and that's something that i really like you know and i'm i'm very proud you know like to now become an aggie and you know like i really thank you all of you guys i know in the future i will know more of you you know but i thank you for those kind of opportunities because it's working you know it's working <laughs> You know, I really appreciate uh, your, your comments and that, that, that feedback. Um, we, we, uh, we work hard to try and make it feel like a family. Um, we, we try to get to know all of our students. I mean, the pandemic has made it especially difficult, but nevertheless, we, we, we work to get to know all of you and, and we, we care about all of you and we want you all to have great careers and, and, and happy lives and, and go down the path that you, you want to go down. Um, so that, that's something we work hard to, to do and we all share those, those values not just in our program, but I'd say that's across the department. Um, so I, I appreciate that, that, that feedback. Uh, another thing that you said that I, I think uh, is worth kind of uh, saying more on is, is that the skill set you learn uh, very, very early on in your education can be applied while you're still at school. And a, a lot of our students uh, start getting jobs on campus or internships 
because they have that skill set and they can start using it. Uh, so so th thanks for sharing that. Yeah, thank you very much for letting me know that. You know, I, I, I don't know all my students, you know, by name because I have over 140 students in that class. But, uh, you know, this, this new platform, this new way of instructing is also new for me. And I didn't know how that was going to work. You know, typically I get that feedback from, from the classroom. You know, the students come and talk and, and you know, the ones who do the work uh, and limit themselves to whatever I have in there would do that. And that's fine. But a lot of them, they want to explore this and take it to the next level. And I'm, 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 you know, that's one of my passions, you know, designing and helping in students and stuff. So, so we, we, we go the extra mile with them and, and they, they get involved and they, you know, they, they, they really develop themselves. And so they, 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 not all of them, right. Of course, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who says, oh, I don't like him, but, uh, but, but I get some feedback from the students, you know, and they, and they tell me, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy this and stuff. And, and that really helps us, you know, uh, uh, feed our, our, our souls kind of thing as educators, right? We're lacking that right now, you know, this, this right here. So your words, your kind words are, I mean, thank you very much for it. And I'm glad that, you know, if, if at least I'm helping one student, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it is happening. So thank you very oh, much. Thank you, sir. You know, like, and of course, you know, like at the beginning and, you know, for everything, how it's happening right now that we are not able, you know, exactly as you said, you know, like to have a human factor on it, you know. So, Correct. you know, but actually, you know, I think like I actually was able to see that you actually started, you know, like to learn different ways to, you know, to approach to us, you know, like, so I, that, that for me, it's, it's something, you know, that has to be with the engineering itself, you know, like to engineer something different, you know, like to, to actually continue with the work. So, yeah, for me, you know, I, I, I will, you know, like be lying, you know, like to say, no, you know, I'm perfect on everything, but, you know, like your videos, you know, like how you actually uh, teach us to, to actually, you know, like find the information from the book and you're like, no, but you can do it this way too. And things like that, you know, so those, those kind of things are like, um, you know, like are actually teaching me a new way to, to actually approach those kind of things. So thank you. And I really appreciate your, your request. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad, I'm glad you're, 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 you're enjoying it. Yes, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? I had a question. Um, sure. What's y'all's favorite part about the MET program? Are, are you asking the faculty? Or are you asking a, a student or alum or all of us? Whoever has a favorite part. <laughs> I, I, I want to say something from the professor perspective that we have in our department. Um, we're very close together as faculty, you know, like uh, in, we don't just work with each other and then don't see each other. I mean, like we have been to everybody's, you know, each other's houses for, for dinners and for special events and stuff like that. Mike, uh, I know some of kids, I'm very close with uh, uh, Luke's kids. Kid, uh, Luke's close with my kids, you know, we all know each other and treat each other as a family. And, and I'm, I, I believe we all feel that way. Uh, we have an open door policy. If, if a student is struggling you know, with a problem uh, and goes and approaches Luke, right? He will try to contact me and some odd to try to see how we as a team can help right, that student and stuff. So we're very kind of weaved together as a, as, as a family in the department uh, and, and uh, and, and we're, we have an open door policy where, you know, people come and we're very relatable and we, uh, all of us, uh, we really want to help the students. To me, in addition with the, you know, the students that we have, of course, there's days that, you know, like you have a lot of work and you're tired and you just want to don't check your email and go work and see your family. But, uh, but the department itself, uh, um, you know, the, the relationship that I have with, 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 with my, my fellow co-workers, it's, it's outstanding. And I, I feel they, they, they feel the same way. So to me, that is part of it, you know, in the professional way, you know, the, the awesomeness about the department. The relationship that we have with our students, it's, it's pretty close to that too. Uh, I tell my students, you know, uh, my name is Eduardo, for example, right? And I don't need to be called Mr. or any of the other, you know, you know, prefix or anything. Just, just call me by my name. That's what my mom. I'm sorry. It sounds like Eduardo froze. Did he only freeze for me or he froze for everybody? For everybody. Okay. You, I, I'd like to shift this, this question over to Sama. I'm curious to hear what Sama's answer is. Oh, the favorite part? 
I totally agree with Eduardo. I mean, um, as I told you guys, I grew up in Tunisia and I came to the U.S. Uh, like just with my husband and I had kids here. I had a new life here. And so it was really important to me to feel those ties with my coworkers and with my students. It's like, it's, it's been my life. I mean, the university now is, is like my first life because all of my family, all of my relatives are, are like back home way far. And so it's been really a great experience being in this department. I mean, um, I've, I've tried being in another department, but also uh, you can feel that this department is very human. I mean, uh, we can just, I mean, the, the pandemic has, um, had a, had a strong effect on that, but still, uh, hopefully we're gonna go back to normal, but we would hang out with the students in, in the main office. We would talk here and there. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just talk um, open door policies as everybody has said, uh, et cetera. And so um, I also had another comment that I wanted to throw in here. Uh, so, um, Luke and Eduardo have really talked very well about the manufacturing side, the CAD modeling and all that, but there is also another wing to the MEG program, it's the energy wing. So we're ha we have a minor in renewable energy. That's a very famous minor across the college. And you know that that's where the world is headed towards that direction of renewable energy. So we teach a lot of very good courses on renewables, uh, solar renewable energies, wind and water, um, we teach all of the techniques of um, uh, saving energies in buildings, uh, green buildings, sustainable buildings, et cetera. Uh, so that's, that's also a very good career path if you guys would, would think about. Thank you, Samah. And, and uh, Samah is plugged in to, to work that's happening across the university and across the region. So she's working on grants with other faculty members um, and, and she's bringing that experience back into the classroom. Yeah, that's some, thank you for mentioning that, but that's also another part. If you guys are uh, interested in applied research, uh, please contact me. Because uh, I don't do theoretical research. I do some computations and all that, but uh, it's all applied to um, actual projects. And we do that through Luke's capstone class as well. So if they're trying to look uh, to design something new, to look for something new, um, it's, it's, it's always good to use the research tools and get the students introduced to that. So again, a, a variety of options in this department. If you wanna go uh, a little with, with a little research, a little design uh, applications, projects, uh, it's like a, a, a whole spectrum of how much you can choose. You, know, you, you get what you put into it, and, and you can take it in lots of different directions. Thank you, Samal. Uh, what, what, are there any other questions, comments? I guess I had one other question. Um, how like, closely related would UNM um, mechanical engineering credits transfer to NMSU? So we, we, we'd have to, to look over it. Um, look over the transcripts, but generally a lot of the, the traditional ME classes transfer over to MET. So like statics, dynamics, those transfer over. Um, if you had a CAD course, um, there may be a bit of a learning curve transferring from one software package to another. So if you're using NX and then you, you now have to use SOLIDWORKS, you'd still get credit for the initial, the intro CAD course. Um, we have uh, circuits courses and, and uh, digital logic course. Um, so we have some, some basic courses that are somewhat similar um, and, and most of those do transfer over. And for the ones that don't, we try to give you a tech elective credit whenever possible. So three of the classes you have to take are, are technical electives. And so we try to give you technical credits there. Um, the, the maths, the physics, the chemistry, all those are pretty standard and they, they do transfer over as long as they're at the, the, the right level. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments? Well, thank yeah, you. Go ahead. Before, I just want to tell you that um, I will try, you know, like to make the engineering department, you know, like very proud, you know, like for the students. I did this, you know, like, I don't know if you guys can see it. 
um, it's like a, a card, a Christmas card, you know, like for this um, this year, you know, because most of the people that I am, that I, you know, like uh, know, because I'm a very social person. So, uh, you know, I, I'm actually sending this. If you want one, I can send you one, you know. But it's a, it's a good tradition, I think, that we can recover, you know, especially in these times, you know, that we haven't um, be able to hang out a lot and stuff like that. So I'm actually doing those Christmas cards, you know, and send it to all the people that I that I enjoy, you know, like passing through. So if you want one, <laughs> just send me your address <laughs> and I will send it to you. It, it feels nice, you know, like to actually receive something in the mail. So, uh, yeah, and especially younger generations that we never received, like, uh, we did sell that when we were, like, little, but now it's not that tradition anymore, so I think it was, like, a, a good thing to do again. <laughs> so, That's a, one, one. a great idea. <laughs> one, one way you might be able to reach a lot of the faculty is, is uh, through the department office. Okay. And so that, that might be a good way. And, and I think it'd be a, a, a pleasant surprise for everybody to, to receive one. Yeah, I actually designed them. So it was like super cool. And you can actually get them, uh, you know, like through Walmart online. And it's only like for 40, I paid like $18. And they even send you like the envelopes with your address already. So it's super cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other comments, questions? Well, thank yeah. you all for, for joining. Oh, you got something, Michael? Um, I guess to touch back on uh, one of McKenna's uh, questions previously on your favorite part of the MET department, um, to give a little bit of like student perspective, um, I do think the faculty um, is a really close knit community with the uh, students as well. Um, I'll see a couple professors around town and immediately they'll they'll come up to me or I'll come up to them and, and they're very approachable and you can just start up a, a normal conversation with them. So. Um, I think it's not just a close knit community between the faculty members, but it's also faculty and students as well. So I think that's a really nice um, added bonus that the, uh, the MET department brings, um, just to give students perspective. Thanks. Yeah, and, and the students develop really good relationships with each other too. I mean, there's so much project work, like you, you almost have no choice. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, so many projects and so many different teams that you join. Um, so like me coming from Santa Fe and I didn't really know a whole lot of people down here and there's people that come from all over the place and, and um, you just develop these, these uh, relationships with pretty much everybody in the, in the department through classes that you've had, through teammates that you've had. So um, yeah, we definitely uh, developed that, that relationship among us as well. Thank you. So should we, should we wrap it up on that? Thank you all for joining. I, I, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to post our, uh, or put up our, our, our contact information, um, real quick, just so if you all ever have any questions, um, feel free to contact us. Um, we have our, our office numbers, which are currently routed, routed to our cell phones and, and our email addresses. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us anytime. We, we, uh, we, we, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of close it with my favorite part is, is working with the students and helping you all reach your potential. Um, so, so feel free to contact me anytime if you, if you have any questions, whether it's related to your, your degree or your career interests or, or anything that you think I might be able to help with. So thanks for taking the time. We appreciate your, our, our guests for coming um, and, and, and for the students that came to, to, to watch this, thank you. And, and hopefully we see some of you in the classroom soon. I apologize for what happened. I had a catastrophic failure. My router completely quit in the middle of it. So sorry about that. Too much Zoom, huh? I guess so. Thank you. And I thank I you. I'll see you in the classroom soon. Thanks. Thanks, Morgan. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. See yep. you guys. Yeah.